It's been too long. I'm already upset with you. Don't be. You can't start the interview off like no. that. No. I'm done. <laughs> the interview's done. No. Listen, you're out here. You got a new song. New Levels featuring Future. Who came up with the idea? Was it you reaching out, Future? Or was this maybe a song you guys already had and you just felt like, all right, I'm going to take it? Or I did it originally and then I was like, man, I could hear Future on the hook. And then Future just did the hook and a verse. So I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> done. Yeah, done. Because um, Future had hit me up to do a video for him. And I shot, thought it was a drought. I directed that video. So then we just, like, was in cahoots with each other. And, like, you know, we just made the song happen. This will be off the new album? Yeah, this is off the new album. The album is called Always Driving Prosper. Taking it back to the roots of ASAP. And um, it's an amazing album. When is that out? Uh, I don't want to put out a date because I don't want my fans to be mad at me. Yeah, because... But mm -hmm. it's going to be out very, very soon. I promise that. Okay, so who's on the album? Got Future on the album. Uh, Sino did the beat for that joint. I got a joint with Missy. Uh, Mustard and Stelios did a beat for that. Um, I got a joint with uh, Chris Brown and Ty Dolla Signs. Got a joint with Rick Ross. I got a joint with Schoolboy Q. That sounds like a great body of work, man. Yeah, man. I, I was... Spent damn near a year and a half mm -hmm. basically touring, working with different producers and, um, you know, work with DJ Khalil, which is amazing. Um, put him in the same room as Clams Casino. So now, if you know DJ Khalil, yeah. he brings in, like, the orchestra, like, you it's know, full on. all the live the live band and everything. Um, Clams just came and put the mic directly in the middle of the room to record everything that was happening. Caught that, looped it up. We was making like old Wu Tang sound and shit is crazy. You're excited. I got like my uncle like on a few of the skits. Like you gotta hear it. it's crazy. He's like the light skinned version of ODB. So um if you ever heard Ferg Forever, <laughs> I got a song called Uncle that's about him. Mm -hmm. Um and this is like the continuation of it. I got a song called uh Psycho, which is his name. They call him Psycho. And it's oh. a song called Let It Bang with me and Schoolboy Q. So Psycho goes into that. It's like yeah. one whole song almost. And then I got a song called Grandma. That's like my grandmother passed away. So I just basically just kind of just was writing as, a, as if I was talking to her. Tatted Angel. Yeah. Just letting very out some feelings. Very interesting lyrics. Thank you. It was very genuine. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it just, it took, I think, everybody to that moment. Like, yo, this, this is real pain. Interesting is what I was going for. And I said thank you because it's like. I wanted to put out something that will force people to listen yes. and get them in the habit of listening because this album is going to have a lot of songs like that where I'm just basically giving all of myself and not holding back. Like, you know, the story about my grandmother or like Psycho and his trials and tribulations. It's like really home-based and, um, you know, it's my rags to riches story. Now, you mentioned something along the lines that that you knew you were gonna lose yams. Yeah. That must. I be... said when we toured in UK, I knew I'd lose him. He went to he went to rehab a year before, but he's seen improvement. But the fame and access is what abused him. But he in heaven now, and I know God will use him. Yeah, it's like I just felt like you know we got to the point where it's just like I felt like I lost the physical being right. of yams. Like we lost that spirit. And, um, you know, it's due to, like, a bunch of outside substances. And he, he just wasn't himself anymore. Yeah. Did it affect you, per se, where you're just like, I don't want to be around anything at this point? It was just certain people that I knew wasn't good for him. I just didn't want to be around those guys. Yeah. And I didn't want him to be around them people. Um, but, you know, Yams is a grown man. And you got money. You can fly anywhere. One day he's in the Bronx. The next he's in London. You yeah. know, I go to London. Oh, he's in L.A. Yeah. So you can't, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's Yams. He's going to do what he do. When it happened, I immediately thought of you. Like, I was like, oh, like my heart. So I to see you being able to create music and to release it like this and it's therapy for you and to see you out here i'm so i'm happy to see you in a good place right now man oh, i appreciate that of course you know yeah. you know i always wear my man i got him on this this new adidas collab shirt that i did dedicated to him you know, which is a, great it's a painting that i did of him with the vision and the blueprint of asap him building a world because that's what he did he built this world for us to live in 
And, you know, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. Hearing those lyrics, I was like, yo, I feel like, you know, you said many great things, but this was like, this was like, this is probably one of the realest yeah. I've heard in a while where I felt like, all right, he's yeah. it's from here. It was like a bunch of stuff that was happening in my life, like a domino effect kind of, and I could have easily like just like kind of been crushed by it. Absolutely. Um, But I just said, man, I'm going to just write it out and put it out to the people the way it is, the way it's coming to me. You know, I went through breakups and all types of shit, like, you know what I'm saying, like uh, feeling marginalized in the game. Now, you're close with Meek. Right. Guys got a bunch of songs together. Right. How did you feel when the whole situation happened with Meek and Drake? Um, I felt like it was good for hip hop. Like, honestly, I yeah. come from, um, I, where I come from battling is that's what we do. That's what we did. And it was fun, like just being competitive and everything. I thought it was good for hip hop. I think it's good too for hip hop. Yeah. The culture, like, look, we need something and yeah. we all want to be the best. Yeah, exactly. And that's what that's what makes it fun. Yeah. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, we all like gladiators. Like, we got to, you know, you got to choose and pick a side. Like, everybody can't be like, and that's, you got to make them people ride with you. Yeah. And, and this game is so crazy because the fans is finicky. Like, you know, I got my day one fans that will always be my fans. But then you got like the fans that just jump on a bandwagon. And those are the guys you got to make choose you. Yeah. And, you know, that's what they was doing when they was battling each Politicking, other. Politicking, man. Exactly. I love that shit. Why do you think people are so scared of, like, competition now? Do you think, because, you know, before, let's say when we were coming up and listening to music, it was, I feel, way more competitive. You could go in on someone. I think the internet makes people more pussy. Yes! I think nobody wants to uh, compete against each other. I think nobody wants to have interaction anymore. Yes. The internet... The, it, guys don't even walk up to girls no more. They they see them in the street and they be like, "Damn, I gotta have to, I have to find her Instagram, or I have to get her Snapchat and What's hit them up on that." Me, I still I still want to holler at the girl. I want her to feel my presence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and the females love that shit because that's a that's a very rare human interaction. Yeah. And it's the same thing with battling. I feel like we're lacking <sighs> when it comes to that. It's been a while since I last saw you. I don't, I'm trying to think when we were talking about your love life, there might have oh, been, man. it might have been a uh, possibility of something happening. I'm so focused right now. So what does that mean what, when a guy says that? I'm focused. I mean, I got friends. <laughs> got friends. I think you said that last time. Now that I think about it, I think it was a friend's comment. I got friends. I'm young. I'm having fun. <laughs> I don't know. I see you settling down one day. I mean, I'm a very settled person. Like, I like, since I'm an artist and my life is so, like, all over the place all the time and I'm constantly traveling and nothing is really, like, in place. You know, I do like to share my time with, like, that, that one special female, but yeah. I'm not sure if I, you know, found that yet. Okay, let's say... I just got out of a long relationship. So right now I'm just coasting. Really? Yeah. How long is long? Ah, it's a long, 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 oh. long, long Ooh. one. I'm talking about when I was broke long. So yeah. long. I mean, you real. heard Tatted Angels. Yes. Yeah. That was a long one. How are you, how how are you feeling? I feel good. I mean, you know, there's no love loss. I'm still cool with the girl. You know, we've been through a lot. Um, but it's just like you know. We grow up, it's time to expand and, and learn ourselves, I feel like. I love the fact that this is how you carry yourself and that relationship because it meant something to you. You know, because yeah, sometimes definitely. when guys are done with a relationship, they don't even acknowledge that person. It's like, oh, yeah, it's nah, 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 nah. I'm never that dude. Like, I'm cool with, like, most of my exes, yeah. you know. Um, I'm not one of those bashful type dudes, like... Oh, I'm not fucking with you no more. All of that type of Real shit. Real petty. We shared a lot of moments and shit. Like, you don't want to see that person do bad. So Yeah. Yeah. So now you're just out working hard. You have friends. Yeah. Like, right now, what I'm trying is, like, really putting 100% into my art. Yeah. Like, you know, like, back in the days, Bosque Yacht and, like, all of these guys, like, 
I'm really trying to like go in on some like eat, breathe, live, like shit this shit. Cause yeah. you know, I, I feel like people are putting out so much subpar work. Uh, and it's so know. like it's draining. All right, so Ferg, talk to me about the album. Yeah, so the album, like I said, is amazing. Um, it's the best art that I've created thus far. Um, I spent a, a year and a half, damn near two years on it. I traveled the world working with different people from Pharrell, Swiss Beats, um, 40. I went to 40 Cribs, spent a week out there in Canada working with all his peoples. Um, worked with 808 Mafia, like... Khalil kind of spearheaded the album with like, you know, just us creating a sound like sonically. And um, I just would have to say that, you know, out of all of the, the people that I work with, I've I've picked like some really good songs to go on this album. And I think it's going to be one of those, those albums that you can listen to for a real long time. And not only you can listen to it a long time, like kids can listen to it, your mother can listen to it. Like I had Yam's moms in the studio um a lot of the time listening to the music my grandmother is on a song i got called beautiful people with chuck d so dumb. you know what i'm saying i got um my mother on like a song i got yams moms on a song i call, got called yammy gang and it's an ignorant ass song too <laughs> it's just so turnt like see basically the album is like um it's my rags to riches story and how i got to where i am so I got like a lot of the moments of like the moments I can remember like all right when I first got my deal like I wish my grandmother was here to like witness it so I wrote a song to her and that's a song called grandma and then I got like the song yammy gang is like all right after we got the money we just went crazy yeah and that's just representing that ignorance of just first getting that check yeah um and then I got strive that's the one with me and Missy, which is like more uplifting and um, me talking about uh, working in Ben and Jerry's. It was scary. My life vision was blurry. You got talent. Why is you here? I'm thinking, yeah, plus I am getting the belly. I remember <laughs> mama screaming, you ain't going to be like your Uncle Terry. Uncle Terry on the corner selling rocks. He don't care what you tell him. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a real like uplifting song. It's like a dance record. And it's going to go crazy in the festivals. I got a joint with Skrillex called Hungry Ham. That's about my hood. It's me, Skrillex, and Grimes. Crazy. She's rapping mad fast under me. Um, I got a lot of amazing records. I got a song called Swipe Life with Rick Ross. Um, an amazing song with Chris Brown and Todd Dollar Signs that the ladies is going to love. And, oh, your um, friends. Oh, yeah, all my friends. Your friends are going to yeah. love. Yeah, hi to the friends. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. Wait, hold on. You you worked with Madonna. Yeah, I worked with Madonna on her album. Share. Were you in the studio when all this happened? Yeah, so um this is an interesting story because I was heading to Swiss Beats um surprise birthday party that Alicia Keys was throwing for him. And then I got I got a call from Diplo and from Skrillex and uh a few other people like, yo, Madonna wants you to come to the studio. I'm like, what? Like, and then my then my cousin is my assistant, so he tells me like, yo, yeah. like Madonna wants you to come to the studio. So I'm looking at him crazy, like, what you know about some damn Madonna? Like, <laughs> and I'm like, hold on, that sound crazy. Um, and then my manager called me. He was like, yo, um, go to the Swiss party after you uh, go to Jungle. You got to meet Madonna at the studio. So I went to the Jungle, and you know she had like all the candles everywhere and. Um, she had her grills, iced out grills in. Very professional. She had all her lyrics typed out big on a paper. And I was like, yo, what made you want to work with me? She was just like, because my kids love your music. My son has work on his ringtone. And I was like, damn, I'm raising Madonna kids, practically. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And we was, I was in the booth and all of that, and she was just like basically telling me, "Yo, talk your shit." Like she's like behind. Were like, you nervous shit. at all? Were you like, eh? "No, nah, I wasn't nervous at all." Like I just felt really comfortable. I felt like it was supposed to happen. Yeah. Like it was supposed to be. I was supposed to be there. I felt. Yeah. It's Madonna. That's crazy. It is. It is crazy. And she had um Stephen Klein which is her best friend, a huge photographer. He does, like, everybody from Kanye, Kim yeah. Kardashian, like, all of the iconic people. 
um, take their photos. He was just chilling in there with her. It's just like very rare moments. I, I, I appreciate like moments like that. Did it go by really fast? Um, no, nah, it lasted actually. We was chilling. <laughs> I played her a couple joints off my album. I asked her if she wanted to get on some shit. Yeah. If she was feeling shit, I played her the ignorant shit. I played her the. But she did. She, shit. Did she? She was fucking with it. She liked the one that um I got Missy on. Before I even put Missy on there, she was like, "Oh, I like this one a lot." Did she say anything insightful? Like any gems? She didn't give me too much gems. She listened a lot, surprisingly. Like you know, but she's a diva. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. She is Madonna. Was Madonna? Yeah. She's like. Yo, she, I need my candles. Yeah, exactly. Like that. But, you know, she listened most of the time. Now, you wanted Kanye on the album. Right. Didn't happen. Right. But it was cool because the song that I wanted him on didn't make it anyway. Because oh, I'm going well, to just save that for another project. Yeah. When we get Kanye. Yeah, Kanye going to get on there. Yeah. I sent it to him. He said he fuck with it. Yeah. It's just he was working on his album. Are you going to be on his album? I don't know. We got to see. It's been too long. I'm already upset with you. Don't be. You can't start the interview off like no. that. No. I'm done. <laughs> the interview's done. No. Listen, you're out here. You got a new song. New Levels, Feature and Future. Who came up with the idea? Was it you reaching out, Future, or was this maybe a song you guys already had and you just felt like, all right, I'm going to take it? Or I did it originally, and then I was like, man, I can for that. Um, I got a drink with uh, Chris Brown and Todd Dollar Signs. I got drank with Rick Ross. I got drank with Schoolboy Q. That sounds like a great body of work, man. Yeah, man. I, I spent damn near a year and a half mm -hmm. basically touring, working with different producers and, um, you know, work with DJ Khalil, which is amazing. Um, put him in the same room, always driving Prosper, taking it back to the roots of ASAP. And um, it's an amazing album. When is that out? Uh, I don't want to put out a date because I don't want my fans to be mad at me. Yeah, because... But mm -hmm. it's going to be out very, very soon. I promise that. Okay, so who's on the album? Got Future on the album. Uh, Sino did the beat for that joint. I got a joint with Missy. Uh, Mustard and Stelios did a beat. Miss Clams Casino. So now, if you know DJ Khalil, yeah. he brings in, like, the orchestra, like, you know... Full on. All the live, the live band and everything. Um... Clam just came and put the mic directly in the middle of the room to record everything that was happening. Caught that, looped it up. We was making like old Wu Tang sound and shit. It's crazy. Had Future on the hook, and then Future just did the hook and a verse. So I was like, "All right, cool, <laughs> done." Yeah, done. Because um, Future had hit me up to do a video for him, and I shot thought it was a drought. I directed that video. So then we just like was in cahoots with each other and like, you know, we just made the song happen. This will be off the new album. Yeah, this is off the new album. The album is called.